Well, how bad is our online sniff test? Pretty bad, apparently. Google has put together a test to see if users can tell the difference between a phishing or scam email and a real email. And people are apparently struggling. One person in particular. Anyway, that is the. <laughs> it's a big deal considering that the average user gets 16 malicious emails a month. So, it's our, t it's our jumping off point for tonight's Taking Stock, and we're joined by John Rolfe, Cost of Living Editor at News Corp, and Greg Baxter, Partner at Newgate Communications. Thank you both for being with us. Uh, we've all done the quiz. Cards on the table. How did we go, Greg? Six. Out of eight. <laughs> six, six out of eight. Uh, seven. That's John, just bragging. Okay, so, yeah. I also got six. And poor old Cole well, I here. I stunk it up. I got three. I'm, it's, I'm it's a liability online. John, you did it twice, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's yeah, right. You you, your, your credit card details are now being used to buy Mercs in Estonia. <laughs> God, I know. Don't tell people your mother's maiden oh. name in your first car, do you? It's bad. I know it's yeah. really bad. Okay. No, so, I just said, he's such a really lovely simple. guy. <laughs> they're all scams. <laughs> when in doubt, they're all scams, right? Is that yeah. the best way to approach this? I typically, seriously, I, I, I delete almost everything that even remotely. <laughs> It looks like yeah. it's, um, yeah. and, and I, one of the ones I got wrong was the Dropbox. One. Yeah, that Dropbox? was the tricky one. Because I do use Dropbox, yes. and, and it was real, but I thought, if in doubt, delete. Well, the yeah. email address was a bit dodgy. It wasn't Dropbox.com. So you, I, I think you had every reason to delete it. And I, I missed the one that was uh, the attachment, the PDF, because it looked legit to me. And when I hovered over the various things, it looked right. But yeah, the best, the best response is, if in any doubt, just delete. And if it's really important, someone might pick up the phone and ring you. <laughs> you point. reckon? Just go old school with old Oh, things. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's funny because the reason why it's interesting, I mean, we, we know we lose hundreds of millions of dollars a year on scams as Aussies, and it goes up every single year. Um, we were talking today, what's the, what do you think the point of this quiz is? Is to basically say, we've lost control over to you guys, or is it an educational thing to, <laughs> yeah, to say basically arm yourselves a bit better? It's, uh, yeah, it's up to you. It's, you it's well, I'm, I'm going to be very cynical. It's Google abdicating responsibility yet again. Interesting. Mm. I mean, I Chris think was wondering that as I well, think yeah. we need we need we certainly need education, and so credit to them for providing some some new tools for mm. identifying scams. I think we also need a lot more regulation around this. But for mine, you know, they are a publishing platform. They need to be accountable for everything that's that comes out of that platform. And it's not just the Googles of the world. I mean, the telecommunications companies that are the carriers of this material. Mm. Have a responsibility as well. So when I say we need regulation, we don't just need regulation that puts clamps on Google. We need regulation across the sector. So because ultimately the, the answer to this is all about consumer protection. Mm -hmm. I think if you said you've got either me as the line of defence against scammers and yep. fishers or you've got Google, mm -hmm. uh, Google seem to be in a much better position mm. to be able to determine what's real and what isn't. Okay, so I will hover over that link to yeah. see if it really is Google.com or if it is you know, Telstra.com yeah. or is it you know, something that ends in .ru. Mm. So I could do that, but how many people do you know that are doing that? Um, I told my wife that that's what she needed to do and she goes oh really and oh. she's a smart woman mm. um, but she didn't marry me but that that aside <laughs> she's a smart woman so look I think that Google and publishers um, the intermediaries are in a much better position to protect us here and they're not doing enough and there is an abrogation of the responsibility in these types of exercises yeah. they've got the scale they've got the money they've got the technology mm. Mm. they would have the technology to be able to identify these things electronically I'm sure mm -mm. And, and get 16 and filter them out per thing. month, roughly, that was, they start right. making it into the That inbox. was the part so that freaked me out the most. Week. Really? It's huge. Yeah. I, thought it was gonna, I thought when I saw 16, I thought it was a lot more than that, to be honest. Really? Yeah. When you look through your, yeah. your inbox, you're kind of, it sounds like you're yeah, deleting away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck getting in touch with Greg Baxter. We're going to put it up on screen. If you want to try it, you want to know what we're talking about, hovering over the thing and, mm. the, you know, the, the addresses that come from, we, we'll throw it up on screen because mm. it's... It is worth a go, although, as John pointed out, the very point, you know, that it says dot with google.com seems a bit, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's not a scam. This is, it kind of looks like a scam in itself. This show is that not one some isn't. elaborate yeah. way to believe Google money. <laughs> Unless it is, but we won't know until later, right? Yes, right. <laughs> anyway, point. it seemed kind of legit when you did it, so very interesting. But, you know, it just proved that Chris Cole is just a lovely, trusting guy, but we already knew that. <laughs> New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has been asked during a BBC interview if she'd proposed to her partner. She was kind of caught off guard and laughed it off. Have a look. Can you imagine asking your partner, Clark Gayford, to marry you? <laughs> or will you wait for him to ask you? I, no, I would not ask, no. 
No. You're a feminist. Oh, I, absolutely. Oh, absolutely I'm a feminist. Um, uh, but uh, uh, no, I want to put him through the pain and torture of having to <laughs> agonise about that question himself. No, that's letting him off the hook. Absolutely not. Plenty of reasons to discuss that. I guess one of the main things that people were saying out of that is, is that a question that would have been asked of a male Prime Minister mm. in the same situation? What do you think, John? Sure. Why not? Mm. I mean, if we had a, a Prime Minister who you know, um, had a child um, and was of an age where marriage was you know, on the cards, why isn't that a reasonable question? I just think far too much is being made of this. She's a much better woman than to, you know, I think the community and the Twitterati is getting far more upset about this than just into Arden is in fact. And let's just move on and um, talk about some, she should be talking about and being asked about more serious issues, but the fact well, that she was asked- she was on stage asked, at the Global Economic Forum. Yeah, the, the mere fact that she was asked, so I've got no problem with that. Yeah, right? she gave a pretty nice, honest answer and was just, very real. She I probably it, hasn't thought about it? it again. Although the only mm. thing I thought is, uh, it, she did seem to say, "Well, you know, that was came out of nowhere." But mm. uh, like you said, I think in that her situation, why was that a, such a surprising question? I think we've shown great interest in politicians' lives. I didn't find it surprising that that was asked of her. But to me, that makes it a good question. You should be surprising people with your questions. Yeah. I mean, they shouldn't be what they're expecting. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah, no, you're right. I think the I think the issue that's, and I, and I agree that there's been a bit of a overreaction on social media, but. I think, as a, as a general point, male politicians get asked different questions than female politicians. And so, while it's not out of the question that a male prime minister would be asked that question, it's far less likely. Yep. Right. In my view. And if you look at the Jacinda phenomenon, I mean, the Kiwis seem to think, well, you know, this is just normal. Get over yourself. Get on with things. That's what we're doing. Um, she is unusual in that she is, well, she's, she's in a minority being a, a leader of, of her country. If you look around the world, there's probably only 5% of them are led by women. Mm -hmm. um, even more unusual in that she's had a child while in office. That's mm. not happened very often before. Um, but she's just getting on with it. Yeah. And the country that she runs is just getting on with it. Yeah. Uh, everyone's behaving like grown-ups. Yeah. Except... <laughs> The rest of us. Well, yeah, it's, it, I thought one of the most interesting things about all this was the follow-up question, and that her answer to that first question, in some way, indicates a leaning as to whether or not she is a feminist. If she said yes, then that means that she is a feminist. If she's not, then no. So I think that's probably a part of the outrage. John, what do you think? Oh, look, it, it must be a very you know, difficult uh, for her to have. To, she, she's representing so many things. Mm. Um, so many things have been foist upon her. She's just trying to get on with the job of running a little country that's not quite as good as Australia. <laughs> and, you know, that's tough enough as it is without having this, this sort of stuff, you know, to deal with. Yes. So, so you liked the land that this week, obviously? Yeah, 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 yeah we like the land that too. <laughs> Saying they're being, being better Australians than Australia? Yeah. Look, I, I still think there's some truth in that, uh, yep. that line from, from decades ago about when you know, the New Zealanders come over here, it increases the IQ of both countries. So. John, John, John. I love John. that. I, I agree with you. I think the, the follow-up question about, you know, are you a, would you, you know, if she says, no, I'm not, I'm not going to ask him to marry me. And then the follow-up question is, would you call yourself a feminist? Mm. I thought it was an ex extraordinarily insulting. Yeah, I thought that was a question. Because very she's a thirty-something year old um, female who's leading a whole country yeah. and just had a baby. There was a there was a, sure a, a, a profile, a big profile on her in the um, British Sunday Times on the weekend, um, under the headline "Jacinda Mania." And uh, yeah. uh, there's a great quote in there from her, and she she says, "You know, I I um, I was always the only woman in the room, or often the only woman in the room at these meetings, and I would breastfeed um, the baby." Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I don't know what the men thought about that because I didn't ask them, and they didn't tell me. <laughs> and she didn't. Care. And I thought, good yeah. for you. Very interesting. Look. All right, well, KFC has released a limited edition can designed to waft rich, meaty goodness into your home. Breathe in the soothing aroma of KFC gravy. It's all gravy, baby. 
<laughs> there you go. Interestingly, though, the fast food giant isn't actually selling them right now. People yep. can... So put down the phone. Put I know, down I know. Settle down. actually buy them. <laughs> there is a roundabout way to get one, though. People can win it's one. It's a scam. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it does well, it's like interesting it. we put this at the end, yes. Um, so people can win one by handing over some data. Uh, so they, they enter the prize, they put in their name, their email, and they might actually end up winning one of these yep. gravy candles. So is this the weirdest exchange you've ever heard of? Some data for a gravy smelling candle? Are you into it? Like no. how badly do you want it? How badly do you want it? If it's a scam, it's not fishing, it's chickening. Yes, chicken, That's good. It's, um, I like it. It's just a funny... I mean, would you want your home to smell like a chicken shop? Well, apparently, I don't know this, but apparently there is something about that gravy which... What prompts. the special ingredient? Well, it, apparently it induces some kind of fanaticism. Oh! In those <laughs> so this devotees. is why it's supposedly highly <laughs> covetable uh, yeah. as a. As an, an item. Look, what? as a candle, though, you then think, well, what would you use that for? Now, you know, an obvious <laughs> thing is say, well, you know, a romantic night in. <laughs> <laughs> then I've got a problem with it's sort of, it's not on brand. Look, <laughs> well, whilst for me, the, they could get my data by threatening to send me the candle. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's brilliant because I think it plays to their audience who go, yeah, give me one of those. What information do you want to know? So I think it's great. It doesn't, you know, they won't get my information from it, but they'll get their audience's information yep. from it and it's not expensive it's kind of cool it's a bit different I, I, I love it there's only 230 so it's completely limited edition mm. uh, you've got to get in first it's only in the UK so potentially marketing genius and we're talking it, about it all the way in I know, Australia exactly <laughs> um, but the other thing that it sparked in terms of discussion in our office is is gravy the world's greatest condiment like is that why if people want that that candle no no, what's the world's greatest condiment? Hot English great. mustard. Hot, Hot English, English mustard. Yeah. See, that, you can't put that with everything, right? <laughs> so you want to, oh, really? I totally agree. Oh. Hot English mustard. Really? Had it on my lunch. So you'd like I'm going to have it on my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I might have it on breakfast. And you want it in your next candle. <laughs> yeah? Would you like your home to smell of Why hot not? English mustard? Why not? Why not? Okay, Ooh. Brooke, what about you? Best well, condiment I, in the world. Well, I was a bit out there because I just said maple syrup. <laughs> I know it's not very <laughs> versatile, but it is the best. None of you have gone for anything versatile. What about you? Yeah. Well, yeah, pretty weird. Perinase, is anyone familiar with that? It's a Nando's product, which is peri-peri mayonnaise. And I okay. am a bit of a uh, bit yuck. Should I put it on everything. So my, yeah, my so fiance is going to be going, yeah, I can't believe you just told everyone that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else in the studio wanted an aioli candle. Right. Um, there was yeah. a lot of different But it's views. all misleading because you come home, you smell it, ah, gravy, who's got the KFC? And then mm. immediate disappointment, right? <laughs> so is it like working in the brewery where they give you free beer? If your house smells of the KFC gravy, you in fact end up not wanting to eat KFC. Oh. It could oh. backfire. That's, That's true. true. The loyal customers could go running. I would have liked to have been, though, in the pitch I don't know, where they've gone, <laughs> I know, let's, let's try KFC Gravy candles. Gravy candles. I, I think if you'd been in the pitch, they brought that in. You say, "We've got to do this." Right? <laughs> <laughs> We've really got to do this. Yeah, it's shown out there. Yeah. The guys, on to a good thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know my husband would definitely say a chutney candle, and that's put him Ooh. way out there for you know that is his favourite condiment. <laughs> he just obsesses over it. So every, everyone has a favourite condiment. Just uh, reminded us today. It was quite yeah. a wide-ranging discussion. Thank you so much, great to talk. John and Greg. Great to see you guys.